What's up guys, it's Pete from Crunch Time Coaching. I'm gonna give you five drills you can do to increase your racket head speed and serve bigger. Let's get started. Okay, so if you want a bigger serve, if you think you can get some more power and you don't quite know what's the best place to start, I'm gonna tell you right now, it's improving your racket at speed. A lot of people will say, hey, power comes from the legs. It comes from the ground up, the kinetic chain. And guess what? That's absolutely true. But the number one thing you need above anything is you need a live arm. You need racket head speed. Otherwise, all the other stuff doesn't matter. The kinetic chain, remember, it builds, it grows, and where it really combusts is in the arm action. And so if you're building up all this power in your legs and all of a sudden you've got a slow racket head coming through the ball, the ball is going to go slow no matter how great a job you did from the ground up. And in fact, I'm going to, before we get into these five tips, I'm going to prove it to you by sitting down, showing you the racket head speed versus doing what I call a serve leak. A lot of people who don't really get racket head speed going, they're missing the secret power source, which I'm going to explain what the secret power source is in this video. And they're missing that. And so all the work that they're doing down below the arm is actually just a waste of time if they can't get the movement in the arm correctly. So let me show you this and then we'll get into these five drills that you can do and I'm telling you if you work these drills your serve is going to get bigger. The so first thing I'm going to show you is me bending my legs, jumping up into the serve, but what's going to happen is I'm going to skip the secret power source which is, which is right here which I'll explain more later in this video but uh, I'm going to do something called a windmill serve, which I notice a lot of people who have weak serves, they come here and they put a lot of energy into it, but their elbow doesn't really bend and they push their serve. And they're putting a lot of effort into it, but you really don't get a lot of pace on this. So again, watch this. I'm going to get ready. Like I'm going to hit a real, a real serve, go for my full effort. But then when I go, I'm pushing the serve and I'm not really getting a lot of power on it. In fact, that was a total clunker right there. One more. <laughs> oh, and oh my gosh, that actually really, really hurt. Here, here we go. I'm going to be jumping in a serve, but you're going to see my arm doesn't get in the secret power source. This comes back and I put a windmill. Very erratic too. Hard to really control and get a good snap. <laughs> oh. ah. So you can see I'm working, I'm working hard actually with the body, but it's all being just ruined by my arm motion. You can see there, a lot of body, double bouncer. I gotta stop doing this because I'm really, really hurting right there. So now we're gonna take a look at me serving from the chair and you're gonna see a noticeable difference in racketed speed. It, it might not reach the fence because I'm sitting down low, but you're gonna notice uh, more explosive, the balls are going to appear to be coming faster off the strings because it, it actually is. Okay, now don't stop this video and think that what you need to do is run out to the court and get on a bench and start serving. That's going to improve your racket head speed. That was more of a demonstration to show you how the racket head speed can make a big difference on your serve, okay? Actually, when you're serving on there, I couldn't do a full range of motion, so it's going to get even better and bigger from here on out. So let me show you the first exercise you need to do to start improving your racket head speed. Okay, so the first thing you need to practice is get into the baseball pitcher trophy position. Now, I was driving by the Braves Stadium the other day and I saw this image that I'm going to show you, this statue, and I thought, oh my gosh, that's exactly what the pro tennis players get into when they get ready to serve. And this is where a lot of power comes from and I noticed a lot of recreational players never get in this. So, what you, what you want to do is you want to get set and you want to be making an L shape in your arm and you want your wrist to be relaxed. You're holding the ball in these three fingers and I, I view it kind of like a cobra getting ready to strike. You see that? It's like cobra fangs and you're getting right here in this position right here. Take a look at that from the side. Take a look at that from the back. Getting right here, getting ready 
getting right here. Now we have some power. See what happens is, is too often uh, tennis players, recreational players flop back because they've never really been taught how to throw a ball. So they'll get here and then they'll go to throw and it's really weak. It's like a push throw. Where when you watch pitchers get ready, they come here, they're right in here. Now all of a sudden I can deliver some real power. So what you want to start doing is learning how to throw from this position, getting here, making your L, making your little gooseneck, being really loose, and getting ready to, to pop your throw. Okay, so you can just practice getting here and throwing some balls and releasing. You wanna feel that ball like spinning off your fingers. You wanna feel that, that power of the ball rotating off your fingers. You wanna feel some strength there. I'll show you from the back. So you, here you see I'm getting, I'm getting this power position. I'm getting ready and releasing my throw. Now if I want to, I could throw the ball over the fence, but I don't want to lose my, my tennis balls. But, but you can see, I can get a lot, of, a lot of acceleration coming right out of that move as I throw, where if I'm missing that, if I just come back here and now I got to throw, <laughs> that's, that's me at full effort right there. So it doesn't matter how much legs I put into this, <laughs> the ball's just not going to go anywhere. So this is what you might be experiencing on the tennis court if you don't have this move. Okay, so the next exercise I call court smash. We're gonna try and like bust a hole in the court by throwing as hard as we can down. Now again, this takes really good feel in the hands, good feel in popping right here. You're basically getting really good at this right here, popping down, getting a lot of acceleration going, and then you can make that ball go very high when it hits the ground. A lot of people, again, are lacking this they, they will tend to throw their ball forward and it will go like that. So I need to be able to do a lot of acceleration straight down. I'm gonna, I have a camera here. My goal is to see how high we can get it to pop up. So let's see if I can smash it and see if we can get it to pop up and catch it on camera. Okay, I'll try a couple more. Get in here, snap it down, and that ball's going very high. Let's see if I can get one more. <laughs> So doing that, doing that right there, that exercise, Seeing how much can you make it go directly in the ground and how high can the ball bounce is a great thing to be able to do. So the next exercise we're going to do is the opposite of that. Now we're going to do sky throws. We're going to try and throw as high as we can into the sky. We don't have to throw it directly straight up, but we're going to try and throw as high as we can. It can also go forward, but we're looking for more height than distance. And what this is going to do, again, is get you that feeling of, of, of swinging your racket up at the ball, getting the acceleration going, and now you're also going to start to get the rest of your body involved. So you're going to add more legs. So this is going to help your acceleration in the ball, more power, because now we're going to use more legs to do this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get here, I'm going to look to throw the ball as high as I can into the sky. And you can see that's way, way high and we hit the fence. Okay, so you can see how long, you guys probably can't see that ball going in the sky, but you can see how long it's taking to actually hit the ground. That one went pretty far and I wasn't actually trying to throw it that far, but it just went really, really far and really, really high. Let's try it again. Gain set, notice my legs, I'm throwing it way up, and now it drops. So again, this is another thing that's going to help us with our acceleration using our body. We'll be back. The next drill we're going to do is we're going to put the racket into our hand. Okay, so now we're on four of five, and this is the secret power source. I've been talking about a lot in this video, and this is what's going to really increase your racket head speed and turn your serve into more of a professional style serve, because all professional athletes, quarterbacks, baseball players, and tennis players, Roger Federer, Andy Roddick, had a huge secret power source. And what is that? That's basically getting to our pitcher trophy position and putting a racket in our hand, and look how the racket head is tilted forward, okay? Again, what I know is a big thing that amateur players do is they get here too soon, and then here, and then it's all over. Where we need to come from here, we need to keep the thumbnail in, and 
The thumbnail comes behind the head and then we get ready and we go. Okay, this will get us into a proper racket drop. And so what I want you to do is if you really want to increase the power on your serve, I want you for the next week to drop the whatever your regular service motion is and just start in secret power source. And then another huge tip is that your leg drive, meaning that when you go from a bent leg to extending your legs, that's going to dictate when you go into your racket drop. Because if you go in there too soon, let me show you this guys, if you go in there too soon, if, even if you're in secret power source, but then you drop behind the head as your legs are still bent, that's going to take a lot of racket at speed and momentum away from your serve, okay? So it's like all the hard work you're doing leading up to the hit, once you do this too early, then it turns into that, a really, really weak serve. So my job is to hold secret power source until I feel like I'm telling to my, myself to go up and get it with the legs, then I'm going to drop and go. So it's here, secret power source, drop and go. All right, and when you're working on racket at speed, you don't really care if the serve goes in or out. You're just trying to really accelerate up at the ball and hit. And those were pretty big serves, and if I'm telling myself if we can get one in, what I have to keep reminding myself is to just snap a little sooner and hopefully we can get one of those to go in. Okay, final exercise I want you to do is the 3x power serve drill to where, you know, lots of times when you are doing a shadow swing and then you feel like you got it right and then you go and do a regular serve, everything falls apart, right? So what I want you to do is to just go for it. Do your best, forget the rest, and you're going to do two shadow strokes and you're just going to throw the ball up. And even if you swing and miss, I don't care. Do not compromise your technique, all right? We don't care if the ball goes in or out. In fact, the way I want you to start doing this, and I got this from Jeff Saltenstein, so Jeff, thank you, is to just start serving into the fence, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to come here. This is my regular motion. I'm just going to go one, two, three. And, and I want to feel no difference between one, two, and three, all right? I don't want to worry about the ball going out, doesn't matter, into the net, doesn't matter. So again, we're just doing our rhythm, whatever our rhythm is. One, two, three. So you get this idea of no hitch, no glitch, no hesitation. And a lot of people, you know, have that when they go to serve. Then once you feel like you've got it, be my guest. Go to, go to the go to the service, go to the baseline and start doing the same thing. Hey, so I hope you enjoyed this video and uh, if you like this video, give it a like and comment. Let me know what your favorite exercise was. Uh, but before we leave, I want to talk about something uh, very important that's on my mind. It doesn't have anything to do with tennis, so if you don't want to hear anything that's not tennis, you can go to another video. But I feel it's important to talk about what, what, what has happened and not, not to ignore it. And that's why I have this shirt on. And it says, can we all agree it was first degree and it's got 8 minutes and 46 seconds. That's the time a man sat on another man's neck as George Floyd was pleading for his life, telling people clearly I cannot breathe, crying for his mother. This has got to stop. And you know, one, one of, it's already a tragedy, but it's going to be a, a, an even bigger tragedy if once again, and the writing is already on the wall with this third degree charge, and, and people are fearing that, hey, is this guy going to walk too? Because it happens too often. And if, if we're ever going to change, if we're ever going to get back to what should be right in this country, then when we see things like this that are so obviously wrong, 
whether it's a police officer or anybody, but especially the police, because let's face it, this is what's been happening. The police officer needs to be charged to the fullest extent of the law. There needs to be a message that this is not acceptable in our country, and unfortunately, it has been. And not just for a couple of years, but since the beginning of the history of our country. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna leave you guys with a phone number that you can call to make a difference. You can call this number and, and you can reach people of influence on the case and let them know exactly how you feel about the case. So I'm putting the number up right here. Again, if I offended you, I'm really, really sorry but I, I just couldn't be quiet, and I don't think anybody watching this video who agrees with me should be either. So call this phone number today. I did it, I went through, and I left as many messages as possible as it would let me do. So uh, thanks for watching, and we'll be back with another tennis video.